Hey, welcome back everybody and thanks for joining us on today's how-to tutorial for how to installing the rear end. Today we'll discuss with you how to install the bearing hangers, how to insert the axle properly, getting it aligned for both bearings, sliding on the rear brake hub, sliding on the sprocket hub, and also inserting the keyways onto the axle and setting your rear hubs. We got a lot to talk about to show you today and let's get to it. The first step in setting your rear end axle assembly is getting your bearings inserted into the cassettes. In order to install the bearings, you will need to locate the notches within the sides of the cassettes that allow the bearing race to fit in so you can simply then turn it 90 degrees to set it. Make sure that when you do this process, the pinch bolt at the top of the cassette is not tight. It will be much more difficult to get the bearing to rotate inside. As a note, the tolerances may vary between each bearing or cassette. If you struggle to get the bearing in by hand, you can simply use the axle and insert into the, the bearing and use that to rotate into position. Keep in mind that when the cassettes are installed onto the cart, that the head of the pinch bolt is facing towards the back and set screw section of the bearing are facing inward. Now that you have your bearings placed into the cassettes, it is time to set the cassettes down into the frame hangers. As a start, you can place them in the lower holes. This will essentially raise the rear of the frame position, giving it a higher center of gravity or increased grip on a green track surface. Simply screw in by hand the cassette bolts onto the lowermost holes for each cassette. This will alleviate the risk of cross-threading the cassettes. Once you have screwed in by hand, then tighten the rest of the way with your 13 millimeter wrench. First, get them fairly snug as you work around each bolt and then go back once again through to get them completely tight. Repeat this process for the cassette on the other side of the go-kart. On the brake side of the chassis, you will then install the caliper bracket onto the upper holes of the cassette. After this is secured, you will then take the caliper and split it by taking each of the two M10 bolts out that run through it. It is best if you take the half that butts up against the bracket and run the bolts through it, then follow by placing all of the caliper spacers onto those bolts. Lastly, placing on the other half of the caliper, secure it by screwing on the nuts onto the backside and tightening it all together. Next is getting the bearings aligned with each other along with installing the brake hub and setting the axle alignment. The logo on the axle should read correctly as if you were standing from behind the cart looking down at it when installed. Typically, you want to install the axle from motor side of the cart into the brake side of the cart. Aligning the bearings up properly is a very important step in the axle installment process. This helps in a few ways, which allows the chassis to not be in a bind which slows the cart down and it also makes for an easier install or uninstall if you need to take it out later. The best way to align the bearings is by inserting it into the cart as normal and running it up to the opposite side bearing. Basically what you're looking for is the axle to line up directly with the opening of the bearing. If the axle happens to be too low, then you will need to slightly hit down on the axle to raise it to the correct centered height. Same concepts follow from left to right as well. Once you get it centered up, push the axle through. It should be able to push all the way through by hand. Then repeat this process for the other bearing as well so both bearings are perfectly aligned. Once you have the axle moving through the bearings nice and easy, you will want to tighten down the pinch bolts on top of the cassettes. Standing behind the cart, slide the axle to the right while having the brake disc mounted on hub in hand to be ready for positioning in between the pads and then sliding the axle through the hub 
and back into the bearing. Don't forget as you are feeding it through the bearing to keep in mind that you place the keyway onto the axle. Also be sure that the pinch bolts on the brake hub are facing to the right towards the motor side of the chassis. As your brake rotor and hub is successfully installed onto the axle, you then now need to go grab your tape measure and center the axle. For this, you will take a measurement off of one axle bearing to the end of the axle. Note that measurement and then go to the other side of the chassis and take another measurement. Move the axle accordingly to reach the same measurement for each end of axle off of the bearing. Once you have the axle centered, now you can lock it down with inserting the set screws into the bearings. A rule of thumb on the tightness of these set screws is that once it makes initial contact with the axle, continue to tighten for about a half a turn. Tightening too much could dent the axle, but you want the screws to dig into the axle so there is no movement. Great, the axle is now set. Going back over the brake disc, you then want to center it up with the brake pads. There is typically some movement you will see spinning the axle of the rotor being slightly off balance from the casting. This is normal. Once you get it centered the way you want, go ahead and tighten down the hub pinch bolts with your 5mm Allen wrench. You can finish off the brake side of your chassis by installing your keyway and wheel hub onto the end of the axle. As a baseline, you can just push the hub all the way onto the axle until it stops. On the motor side of the chassis, you will first need to install the axle keyway and sprocket hub before repeating the process of installing the other keyway and wheel hub. While you're working on the back end of the chassis, you might as well take the time to do the simple install of the motor mount stop bolt to finish out this segment of your cart build. And that's how you set your rear axle end assembly. It's very important that you follow these steps very closely as it's a very important part of getting your go-kart to be the most free that you possibly can to have the most speed down the straightaway that nothing is in a bind. Thanks for watching and we look forward to seeing you on our next tutorial video. Again, subscribe to our channel. That way you can get further notifications when we post these videos for you. Thanks again and have a great day.